I was born in Montreal. I was too young to remember being born. That's a paradox, isn't it? Future ambitions? Hell, none. <laughs> I don't plan on being anybody special in life. Uh, you know, I just basically want to live life and go out and walk and in the summertime, be in the gardens and you know, do things like that. Just, just try to be uh, an average person. Just, just enjoy life. Oh, it's still nice here. I'll try not to. They say chess players are crazy sometimes, and you know, it's true. My, my workload in society was, is not by choice, but it chose me. I didn't choose it. I did something I'm creative with, with my hands. I, can, I make pizzas and I'm very proud of it. I take a little pride and effort in my presentation of the product to the people. And that gives me a little bit of satisfaction and joy when I can serve a customer and know that I made a good product and that I'm happy and, and they'll be happy. I just dug up the uh, name uh, Persh because it's it's different. It's flexible on all openings because everything can be transposed in a game. Uh, My name is Albert Ead, and uh, I've been playing chess since '75. What a black's first move, he makes pawn to G6, and it's called a pianchetto, where he wants to bring his bishop out here and have a, a diagonal he can have control of. And the object of your game is get control of the center. Mr. Perk, well, I know I see it written all over the store. Mr. Perk on his water jug. Mr. Perk on the walls. Uh, uh, Mr. Perk, I mean, to me, it's, uh, it's, it's uh, related to chess. And Gary is really into chess. It's uh, a love for him. Uh, I know uh, a guy like, for instance, is, uh, his name is Michael Eldridge. Well, the first time I met Gary, I was not aware of it because it was 20 plus years ago at a YMCA meet in Halifax. And I got the opportunity. I said, Dad, listen, you want to play a quick game? And I more or less sat down just to move the pieces around just to... And geez, you know, he just did things so effortlessly and I was in trouble. Twenty some years later, he contacted me at the uh, Student Union building at Dow when there's a chess tournament going on, I spoke two or three years ago, and wanted to play correspondence with me. And I agreed. And we've played 216 games, I think, so far. And I told him, you play me a bunch of games for a couple of years, it'll make a major difference in your game. And it has. I'm very honored because I, I, I just said, I told him he's my, he's my mentor. He's teaching me chess. I sharpened his game. I told him he'd leave everybody else behind. And it helps my game. And uh, one of my cards, I made a move to him and I, uh, I sent uh, a question to him. I said, how can I be a better chess player? He says, first and foremost, lose weight. Get healthy. His lifestyle isn't good because he smokes a lot. Must be around 5,000 a year, I'd estimate. What? That's a filter. And I think he's drinking again. Because oh, we were playing chess a couple of nights ago on the phone. He's getting awful short with me. Oh, yeah, I'm fine. I feel like a fool. I've told him he should get a bigger apartment. It's too small. Drive you crazy being in a small apartment. It's like putting a tiger in a small cage. I don't want to say it's a slum. This is the, this is the better area of the slum neighborhood. It is the mind which creates the world around us. And even though we share stand side by side in the same metal, my eyes will never see what is beheld by yours. My heart will stir to the emotions which, which yours has touched. A lot of that's reflection medication difference. He's on one of the old ones, it's obsolete, and I'm one of the new ones. It makes that much difference. I try to get through to him about it, but it doesn't seem to work. He doesn't mix with people well, that's part of the illness. But the new pills get rid of a lot of that. He finds it hard coping with people, hard coping with people at work. He doesn't like to go to chess tournaments, he has finds pressure, all kinds of things. I have a hard time getting games with him. If he got a new medication, so many doors would open that he wouldn't believe it. One guy that's here in Windsor, I tried for two years to get through to him. He finally got on it and phoned me up. He said, Mike, I can't believe how good this is. After being a week, I said, what do you think I've been trying to tell you, Jim? And this is a guy with next to no insight, not very smart in my opinion, and nuts over Christianity because he's brought up as a Christian, went flipped overboard on it. 
Charlie threw to him that, that a lot of his Christianity was schizophrenia. Anyway, after one week, he phoned me up and told me he couldn't believe how good it was. So my point of view isn't rashly taken, it's based in fact. And he's pretty well convinced in his own mind as to, uh, as to the idea of me taking it because it would help beneficially if I did get on such a prescription or medication that it would have helped me improve my chest. Well, well, I accepted years ago that my first premise in life is that I have schizophrenia. It permeates everything I do. And I see Garrett as someone with schizophrenia, resistant treatment, and a lot of other problems too. That's on the old medication, myself on the new medication, and I see the contrast between the two. That's how I see us. So what I'm on now is like an antipsychotic medication, right? You distort uh, way of thinking and feeling. Uh, I have moments that uh, I slip and slide. And but it's mostly my point of view is between those two, and I find him very frustrating. I presume he finds me frustrating too. Like if you're at a bar and you see two people and all of a sudden you, you just mind your own business, you see these two people arguing and all of a sudden they end up in piss fights. Well, they're not using rationale. They're losing their cool. They're, it's not the proper way of doing it. So that's a psychotic moment because they're not being realistic. They're not using rationale. But with me, it's different. I don't have to be per se in a bar drinking to lose my cool. I had fewer social skills. Now I have a girlfriend. We're engaged to be married here last September 22nd. Most schizophrenics don't get married. or If you're married and you have schizophrenia, it almost invariably means divorce. Well, that's part of me that died. It's not with me anymore. Uh, sure, that, that, the recollection of being married was it's a one-time thing, eh? I regret my marriage because I felt responsible. The last time I saw my wife divorced, three and a half years ago. She said, hi, Gary. I said, hi. She said, how are you? I said, fine. I said, are you? She's fine. And that was it. And uh, that was about the extent of the conversation. She hasn't changed her looks. She's now remarried. Uh, I wish her all the best. Very good woman, and uh, she deserves all that she can get, all that she can get out of happiness in life. You gotta have a lot of courage when you're playing. You can't be sh shaken up. And I know I'm gonna get results. I've done it before, and I can do it again. He was up a piece in a pond, he could play it drunk. The guy wouldn't quit, he wanted to be executed. Had no hope. He lost a pawn right in the opening, and Garrett was good at cleaning up. I would have played it slightly differently earlier on, but can't argue with success. We all have our own styles. It's all over. Are they just finished? Yes. It was going along very well, but I reached a point where I had to make a decision between two different alternatives and I had to make a decision within a certain amount of time. It turns out that the, the, the decision I made was the wrong one. It's a basketball tournament upstairs, guys. I'm telling you, it's his murder on the eardrums. Chris Hump, Chris Hump, Chris Hump, boom, 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 boom. This is a uh, black, black basketball tournament in uh... Peace, brother. Have a good one. <laughs> Thank you. 
the better man lost. Simple. I locked up. He never shook hands. His 21st move was a blunder when he checked me. That's fortunate win. I'll take it any way it comes. Oh, uh, Mike Eldridge, I believe he withdrew from the tournament. Uh, I don't know personally, but I would presume uh, that uh, the fact that he had lost his game this morning, uh, it was the second loss out of three games, and he was, in fact, in my opinion, winning in both games. And so, sudden reversals like that, you know, sometimes a player will, uh, you know, decide that discretion is a better part of valor and you know, cut his loss as well he can. I'm actually quite pleased because I, I held my own. It was well balanced. It was equal. I had a drawing chances. And then I got a little too ambitious because I thought I was doing more than I should against them. And uh, I got overconfident and uh, I miscalculated a move and it cost me the game. So it's, it's a learning experience. But, it's, but that one loss does not make the whole tournament. This gives me more incentive now. I had the intentions of going in there, playing for a draw, and hoping to squeak out a win. Lost for words. So I offered a draw, and he looked at me and shook his head. He's referred to as the, uh, the saint, the patient man. Yeah, Matt, Gary. It's uh, 9 o'clock, roughly a little after 9 o'clock p.m. Last round, play George Fields, one. Talk to you. Totally frustrated. I was going for the win. It was almost, almost for sure thing. I dangled around a little too much and a draw, but uh, looking for a win, of course. But it didn't quite pan out that way. I give my queen away. Why, that's normal. But he's a very good player. I mean, he's a very tough opponent to beat. Yeah, I played the perk in the last game against this guy. He, he murdered me almost. I, I was lucky to win it. Oh, he's good. I mean, very good. I like the style. <laughs> it's really good. Surely, that's got to be it. Yeah, I'm going to get the fuck out of here and go home. That's it. Just simple. Sweet. I ain't around for, just for, for any prize balloons and whatever. I'm just... Get the hell home. <laughs> Bad enough doing four days. You stop 10 hours, chess a day. Four days. <clears throat> That's hard in the head. After a while, when I go home, I just all I see is chess pieces. Life is nice now. It can suck at times and you have a miserable life. It's up and down, you know, hills, peaks and valleys. But if you stick with something to persevere enough, you'll finally get your moment in life. You'll enjoy what you want to do. I'm tired, buddies. I'm really tired. Feel real good going home tonight. Go placidly amid the noise and haste, and remember what peace there may be in silence. He's a very gentleman of the player. Uh, very, very, very respected. There will be greater and lesser persons in yourself. I begin to realize, hey, I'm not the only person in this world that feels sorry for himself. There are a lot less fortunate people out there. Be on good terms with all persons. But I'm glad to know. Mostly ignorance and not wanting to meet halfway, but ever since we've met halfway, I've enjoyed my time with them. Speak your truth quietly and clearly, and listen to others. Even the dull and ignorant, they too have their story. Strangers become friends, friends become strangers. But you find that 21st person that is a group, gives back and becomes a friend, those 20 takers is worse that one that becomes a friend. And Gary very well may be that one. You are a child of the universe, no less than the trees and the stars. You have a right to be here. And it's to the point now where I'd say, yeah, I, I definitely consider Gary a friend. He's just an icon with the company. Everybody knows Gary. With all this sham, drudgery, and broken dreams, 
you a still a beautiful world. Be cheerful. Strive to be happy. Winston Churchill, good man.